empower black men to live extraordinary lives. Shadow the stereotype. Power black men. Power black men. Shadow the stereotype. Power black men to live extraordinary lives. Shadow the stereotype. Shadow the stereotype. Power black men to live extraordinary lives. Welcome to Shatter the Stereotypes, where the intention is to empower black men to live extraordinary lives. This show is based on the simple idea that every black man is capable of creating inner peace, dynamic health, great relationships, and financial abundance. Therefore, we provide insights and strategies to educate, motivate, and inspire black men to reach their full potential and create the life of their dreams. So if you're ready for some high octane motivation and inspiration that supports and empowers you to live the life you were born to live, get ready to shatter the stereotypes so you can build a life that lights you up and positively impacts the world. So now let's shatter the stereotypes with your host, Coach Michael Taylor. Hello and welcome to Shatter the Stereotypes, where my intention is to empower black men to live extraordinary lives. You see, there's never been a shortage of black male role models. There's only been a lack of exposure of those role models in mainstream media. So my intention is to showcase and highlight black men who are doing remarkable things in the world. And my guest today is doing just that. I recently attended a conference called Access Granted which is a conference designed to support black entrepreneurs in locating funding and learning how to start and grow a business. The conference is hosted by Seneca Dunmore, who is known as the pint-sized powerhouse, and she definitely lived up to that title. And during the conference, I was introduced to this brother named Marley Watkins, and he talked about the advantages of setting up multiple LLCs in order to minimize tax liability for your companies. So as an entrepreneur, he definitely got my attention, and I learned a lot about the benefits of having multiple LLCs from his presentation. So since I believe the best way to build generational wealth is to become an entrepreneur, I'm always searching for ways to not only grow my business, but to also share insights and knowledge with others to support them in starting their own business. So I invited Marley to join me on Shadow the Stereotypes to share his wisdom, and without hesitation, the brother said, yes, sign me up. Let's do this. So without further ado, let's welcome Marley to the show. Hello, Marley. How are you? Hello, Michael. How are you? Pleasure oh, to be here. Absolutely. It's fantastic. So before we jump into your work and your story, let's start off with a few icebreaker questions. So first of all, tell us where you're from and tell us a little bit about your family, whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Oh, excellent. I, I grew up in a town called Corm in Long Island, New York. It's a small town, but most of Long Island supports New York City. I grew up in a pretty big family. I had four brothers and one sister. Uh, I was blessed to have a great mom and dad. They did fun. They did phenomenal things. My, uh, uh, I was the youngest of six, so my uh, I got to see a lot of my bigger brothers uh, live and play sports. So it was a it was a very unique way to to grow up. We could not unique, but just a big family back in the day. So big family cousins. Everybody helped out. So we had a nice. Uh, set growing up. So it worked out well where we still keep in contact. My brother and I are still best friends. Uh, we were all each other's best man at our wedding. So it kind of worked out nicely that we were able to grow up and stay tight. Nice. Now, tell us about, about your immediate family right now, your wife, kids, whatever you got. And right now I'm married to my uh, beautiful wife, who's uh, she's an attorney. She, so it's always nice to have a good balancing act in the house. And I have two daughters, uh, Zoe, who's five, a uh, six, sorry, and Sage will be two in October. And it's uh, really fantastic because while when you said entrepreneurship and we were at the same conference, it's nice to be able to to see the next generation and to speak to them about creating generational wealth, owning your own business, being an entrepreneur. My six-year-old is upstairs, you know, has her own hair salon, washing her dolls and getting paid in quarters for it. So we like to keep paying, you know, so we're like, hey, be the owner. So it's nice to see the next generation um seeing that firsthand and that and that's pretty cool yeah laying that foundation early man that's that's great now i'd like you to name a couple of people who have shaped you into the person that you are today my father and brothers are e easily easy to mention but I, because of that family that's kind of obvious it would be um chimo do 
Now, Chimo Du probably had one of the bigger influences on me. Chimo Du was my mentor. And if you ever heard Chi's name, you've seen his work. He's a hip hop photographer. Uh, if you've ever seen a Source magazine cover, that was Chi. Uh, Biggie Road Trade Center, Tupac with his bandana, Nas in the room with a Nintendo. That was Chi's Nintendo. Um, so all wow. that knowledge was Chi. And Chi had a profound influence on him because he, being who he was and knowing that world, he demythalized a lot of things for me coming up. So for Chi, he had a huge impact on these people were touchable. The Wu Tang, no, he shot him in, in, in their projects. You know, he saw him firsthand. You know, Pac, no, he talked to Pac after Pac shot the, at, the, at the undercover cops. He was there talking to him. So he demythalized a lot for me. And having him as a mentor, him to bring me up, him to speak to me was huge, profoundly impactful. So one person I would say was, you know, was Chi. Um, at the, and uh, I was my wife has had a huge impact just being, uh, um, being through the journey the whole way. Uh, and I would say those two are the two biggest that have impacted me. Um, and then as every, every client, to be honest with you, every client we had has taught me something. And I look back on all of our clients and all of our journeys. Um, each client has taught me one thing or something very important that I've taken along. So I would say, honestly, all my clients, they have all taught me immense uh, amount going through this journey. Now, and, uh, you, you speak to Chi as he passed away? I, he passed away. He's no longer, okay, he's no longer with us. Okay. Yeah, he passed away and he actually was, I use his story a lot because the power of multiple LLC structuring is me and him, when we were talking, we said, let's just make sure we put his wife on the LLCs as a B member. In case this is years before, nothing, in case something happens, he has a massive IP catalog. You can imagine what those photographs are worth. Hip hop at its infancy, from 89 to 97, all those photographs are cheats. So you could imagine the, so fast forward when he gets sick and passes away in two months, we had no idea. Um, his wife was able to use those LLCs to inherit everything. No probate, no surrogates court. So I use it now as a real life story of how this structuring is real. You know, it's legacy planning built in. He literally created generational wealth by setting up these multiple LLCs. We, again, we did not know he'd get sick. We did not know he'd pass in two months. We didn't. We were, we were planning a, uh, uh, an artist outing. So we literally <laughs> had plans. And so I use that now because Chi is still with us. I hear every call he comes up just to tell clients, this is real. This is real. This really, really matters because there's two paragraphs saves the entire family. Yeah. This nest thing. Uh, yeah. I mean, his artwork goes for $50,000 some of these nowadays. You know, he always joked. He said, art goes up when you're gone. There's no more chi. There's no more pox. There's no more big. You can't get those again. So any of those are his. And I would see his catalog. He has thousands, thousands. You haven't seen the photographs that he has in his catalog of these guys when they were young. So yeah, so he did pass, but a true story about how this structures and why I started to jump on this call. It's why I speak so passionately about this. It's real. It really does matter. Yeah, and we're going we're gonna to jump deeper into that. But for now, I want you to complete these sentences for me. I really love to save my clients money and tax. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really, really love it. Okay. My superpower is empathy. Mm. I'm proud of my kids. They what? are growing up in a different world than we are. And to see them handle it is nice. Nice. Life is marvelous, wonderful, and short. One thing I'd like to change about the world is. In the status quo. The future is unwritten. Ah, okay. Now, I wrote a book titled The Cure for Onlyness, A Black Man's Guide to Joy, Passion, and Purpose. And in the book, I talk about the unique challenges that we as Black men face while being in environments where we're the only person of color in a room. 
And I'm certain you've had that experience. So I'm curious how you navigate through those situations. It's actually interesting. I tell a story. When I was a pharmaceutical rep, there was only a 1,500 person sales force, huge dinner. There was three of us, a 1,500. Um, so it just shows you how much we were always the only person in the room. Um, yeah, so I think to navigate it and understand, but I, I would challenge everybody who's listening, understand, understand that you being in that room by yourself is not by accident. That's the bigger part. Understand that they strategically used you to fill a number and kept moving. Know, know that in the room that you have to navigate it with everybody else in there. So as I was in those rooms by myself and all the sales conferences, especially in the corporate structure, we were only, I was only in um, you have to, I, I always had in the back of my mind that this was not by accident. You know, this is not, this is not, you're not the lucky one. No, you're the one that allowed them to check a box. So with that in mind, we try to move a little differently. I try to always make sure that in my mind, there were no allies. Um, you know, you have to survive, be the best, but know that somebody who may be a friend today may not be a friend tomorrow. And, and you have to acknowledge that. So that book is timely because we all live in that world. I say men, women, acknowledge that, that you're there. Not by accident, the only one. They could hire more. They're very talented people. They you once they got that one checkbox, that's all they needed. And wow. I try to be conscious of that. Yeah. Now, as a man who happens to be black, are you optimistic or pessimistic about the future in general? I am pessimistic for black males, if we don't change something drastically, we are by far an endangered species. Um, we are by far, right now, at the, I think, in the worst we've been in, in human history. Um, everybody would say slavery was the worst. Slavery was horrible for black men, but black men still had a role. I think what has happened over time, and so for black men, I would say pessimistic, unless something changes drastically. Um, optimistic for black women. They have had enough, they've had them. So this happened, my mother talked about it for years. This is actually done in the 80s. In the 80s, they kind of took a lot of black women and separated the science and math and investment. And for black men, they kind of left us super predators and left us down. You're seeing a 30 year difference. So that's it's an interesting question. We talk about it a lot. And you would say black women have made massive strides. And my mother always she jokes about it. So yeah, this was done 30 years ago. In the classroom, they started to se separate and choose. She's educated. Um, so I'm not surprised that in law school, med school, they have skyrocketed past us. And again, so I think for, for us, that's why I like coming together. That's why when my black males are across from me, we're talking, we get real because we need to look at ourselves and say, hey, it's not working for us, right? You know, it's not. So the, the, the travesty that I hear, which makes me the most sad, is where I hear somebody say, well, I'm not in jail or dead. That shouldn't be the, the baseline. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it shouldn't be. That's why I'm saying it shouldn't be the baseline. Well, we're not jail, not dead or in jail. That shouldn't even be a thought. And that's why I say for us, we have to change something drastic. Yeah. And that's the reason I launched this podcast and wrote the book. I wrote a book called Shattering Black Male Stereotypes, in which I address a lot of the negative stereotypes perpetuated by the mainstream media. But it is my belief that as Black men, the first thing we have to do is change our inner narratives about ourselves and changing that conversation about jail and, and that type of thing, which is so embedded in some of our young men, it begins with us having that conversation, right? So mm -hmm. the reason that I started writing back in 1994, I was in a restaurant and I overheard a conversation between these two brothers and they were apparently well-educated, well-spoken, professional black men. And they were talking about the eradication of black men from society. I mean, and it was one of the most depressing conversations I'd ever heard. But I remember I walked up to this brother and I said, man, please tell me you don't believe what you just said. And the brother looked at me and he said, absolutely. Don't you watch the news? I believe in 20 years, all black men will either be dead or in jail. And it was that conversation, that comment that said that triggered something in me that said, I have to do something to change the mindset of Black men. And that's when I started writing back in 1994 as a result of that particular conversation. So 
um, to your point, yeah. like I said, we as black it. men have to have these types of conversations. Absolutely. You need it. Now, so now I want to give you an opportunity to introduce Marley Watkins to the Shadow of the Stereotypes audience. So tell us about what you do professionally. Well, professionally, I am the owner and CSO, Chief Structuring Officer of Simply Structure, LLC. And I own Simply Structure Holdings, Simply Structure Ventures, a couple other LLCs, and you'll know why, you know my story. Um, and what we do is we set up um, multiple LLC structures for, for folk. Uh, to give you a bit of background, started my career as a college athlete running track and field at St. John's University. I was in the news a lot for Rick Pitino, so I'm happy to see some positive press. And while we were, while I was there, I ended up getting hurt. And as I got hurt, I kind of had to get a job. So I started work at this small startup company called Fiji Water. Um, now Fiji Water has exploded and it's known around the world. However, when we started, I was one of their early employees. And from Fiji, I got recruited into pharmaceutical sales because I had a good track record at Fiji. From pharmaceutical sales to law school, law school was recruited by a company called CT Corporation. And that's led me to Simply Structure, and CT Corp wanted me because I, I was a lawyer who happened to be a salesman, which mm. was very rare. But I had six, seven years of legitimate sales experience before law school. I just started my career very young, and it worked out. Uh, mm. Fast forward to CT Corp, because that's where I was managing. That's really where this whole knowledge base of multiple LLC structuring, LLC, triple LP, LP, GP, INC, all of those knowledge, that was all from CT Corporation because CT Corp is the world's largest corporate service provider. They're the biggest company, I think, that nobody's heard of. They are all their clients, are all the names you have. To put it in perspective, CT Corporation has 90% of the Fortune 100 and 95% of the Fortune 500 as clients. So they're almost a virtual monopoly in this space. And what they do is form, structure, and manage clients' entities. And my title there was Strategic Entity Creation to Minimize Tax Liability to Corporations. So we're doing the same thing as at Simply Structure. Fast forward in that world, we were able to see massive corporations and really behind the scenes, I joke, we saw behind Oz, we saw the curtain. We saw how massive portfolios manage. We did the merger between NBC and Universal. You know, we formed, we did, that was all our team. Seeing that done at such a high level allowed us to really see the blueprint and the real fabric of corporate structuring and how important it is. Fast forward to why Simply Structure exists and why we started the company, we realized in our community, black, brown, entrepreneur, athlete, entertainer, that type of structure didn't exist. Uh, it was reserved for the Fortune 100, reserved for the mega wealthy, reserved for the 0.001%. And we think that's not the case. So what we do is take that same exact structuring methodology that your dollar is your dollar, uh, is your benefit, do everything you can to keep that dollar. And it business structuring, from what we could tell, is the um, only way to do that legally. And that's what we do. But we formed this company. We joke, we formed it for the barbershop owner. And we formed it for the guy, we formed it for the young athlete that doesn't know that if he has a party at his house, somebody cuts their foot, they can sue him for millions. Versus having a party at his house, that house is an LLC. They cut their foot, they sue the LLC. The LLC has no assets. Sorry, case over. That's what we formed this company for. Yeah. Uh, that's how way corporations live. <laughs> that, that's their work. So that's me. At the end of the day, I think if you want to know who's Marley, a person, uh, a flawed person, a humble person, uh, but really, really love our people, really believe that. The answer to all our problems is, as quote Marcus Garvey, is wealth. Uh, the answer to everything we have yet is wealth. We need to create, preserve wealth because that allows you to do everything. Uh, so that's that's me. Got you. Now, where'd you go to school? Where'd you go to college? Uh, St. John's. St. John's. Okay. All right. Now, now, I mentioned that we met at Access Granite Conference. So, how did you become involved with that, and why do you think the conference is important? Uh, I came involved with that because when I was uh, reaching out to Seneca, she had wealth as a focus. And I think the conference is mega important because that's really what we need to focus on. How do we start generating and building wealth? Contacts are great. Friends are great. Parades are great. All that stuff is all fine and dandy. 
we got to create wealth. We have to collaborate to create wealth. I think that's what drew me to the conference. The conference is beyond important. I think she needs a conference in every city all the time because we need to change the conversation. The conference we attended, and I was telling everybody who left, everybody there was a heavy hitter. Everybody there had huge amount to bring to the table. I'll take a conference full of all heavy hitters than a conference full of any people that want to take pictures on Instagram. That does nothing for us. We don't own Instagram. We don't own Facebook. All we do is build content for other people. And that, that's, and I remember reading Garvey's book. He said, I pray our people don't become a nation of consumers. Fast forward 80 years, we are a nation of consumers. So the conference is important because it's founders, entrepreneurs, builders, collaborators, and wealth. But that's what we got drawn. It speaks our language. And I think I have Seneca who's listening and watching. We need more of her. We need more of these conferences. Attend Access Granite Conference. The amount of information you get there is invaluable. The speakers, the person sitting next to could probably change your world. Um, and that's why we love the conference. And that's why, you know, any chance we get a chance to go back, we're there. Yeah. Now, you made an analogy at the beginning of the conference about you're in a room with a bunch of track stars. And uh, your coach or something was saying, you know, because you went in with your chest kind of all stuck out, thinking you, <laughs> you know, you, you were the top of the crop. But you use that as an analogy for entrepreneurs. Can you share that story real quick? Oh, excellent. Yeah. So when I uh, when I got to St. John's, I was a state champion in all America in track and field. So I thought I was the top cats me out. I mean, you can't say I mean nothing. Eighteen year old kid, let's go. I'm the best. So coach has everybody in the room, just in the, in the on the track. Okay, so. Who here is a state champion? The whole group moved up. I'm looking around like, hold on, everybody's like this. <laughs> and he goes, who here is an All-American? Half the group stood up. I'm like, I'm as good as half the group. Then he said, who here is a state record holder? About four or five people went forward. I couldn't go forward anymore. I realized that moment, people were much faster than me. Then he said, who here is an Olympic qualifier? That means they ran Olympic qualifying standards while in high school. One person went forward. It was Robbie Gary, ran 45.9 in the quarter mile. He went forward. I realized that moment, I wasn't it. And it's one of the most humbling moments of my career because I never forget that moment. I tell it all, it's people are faster, people are better. And so that's how I explain, using that story, I explain how LLCs are structuring are, you know, there's multiple layers. But that story was a great one to understand. And I tell people in my life now, I'll take that story one step further. I was blessed to run against Justin Gatlin, who was an Olympic gold medalist and a guy, one of the fastest people in the world. Had it not been for Usain Bolt, he would have been everything. And I ran against Andre Johnson, who was an NFL Hall of Famer, wide receiver. So I was able to see greatness and see the elites at a very close level and know that they put in extra work, extra time on top of their incredible gifted talents. And I think entrepreneurs to be the great and elites is the same concept. I usually use both stories. So I told one there, but I usually use that story. Well, in the race, I was not close to them. <laughs> they were way ahead of me. <laughs> but I was still in, on the same track as a, as a gold, limit gold medalist and a Hall of Famer. Yeah, I love that story, actually. Now, being an entrepreneur is definitely challenging. And one of the things that every entrepreneur will have to deal with in some way is setbacks and challenges. And you talked about a business venture that you started that didn't quite work out the way you planned. Can you share that story with us? Yes. Um, so as we started the company out, we were very hyper-focused on formation, getting people to form. We believe that formation was the most important part. So we started a, an international company in Bermuda. We moved our family to Bermuda. We said, you know, this could be a no-brainer. How could people not want international formation? It's the best situation. It's tax-free, no tax income. It's a, it's a top of the incorporation. International is a top. Nothing's higher than that. So we did a whole life savings. Everything went there. And then it, we failed spectacularly. No clients, burned through all of our money, um, ended up just killing our brand. We focused on a shiny object. We didn't focus on our core business. Lost almost everything. Moved back to me here with, you know, basically running out because we had no money and failed spectacularly. However, I say out of that massive failure, we realize that formation is a busy business. That's legal zoom. That's Zen business. That's the library. That's free. And we got out of the formation business. So if we didn't burn and fail, I don't think we would have ever had that pivot. So we realized that structuring 
That's where our expertise really lies. That's what a CT does. They don't care about formation. They care about the structure of the transactions. So we were able to take this, again, massive failure. I spent eight years trying to get to Bermuda, nine months blowing it up and, and, and literally blowing through everything. Um, but to fast forward that, to say that simply structure came out of that. And now we're doing, you know, by far 10 times better because we changed the conversation. We don't care where you fall. We just know legal zoom, Zen business, the library is not forming five operating agreements, SPVs, moving your deeds. That's what we do. And so again, it, it was a, I don't know a bigger failure I could have done because again, I, I, everything I had and everything we had looking forward two years, after years later, it had to happen. Everything happens the way it's supposed to. And, and I think if you watch, like you said, and then you gave some kind words before we spoke, you said, it has to. And I said, that's nice to hear that it has to. And your story that you tell is very, it's commendable. You got, you picked yourself off the asphalt as well. You know, you, you have to fail and then to do something good. So yeah, so we, we crashed and burned, but in the crash and burn in the ashes, this company we have now survived and, and now it thrives and we're, we're, we really are blessed. And that's the journey that you're going to fall. I, so a high school kid asked me, What's the one word of entrepreneur advice you would give? Thought about it. And I was like, you're going to be broke. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best I could tell you. You are going to be broke. Because even if you make money, it's going to go out in ways you got to get tired. So you're going to be broke in about five to six years. When you make it past that, it'll be all right. So he's getting and he started laughing. I said, That's the dream. So yeah, that was who we are. And I, I tell that story everywhere we go because I want to remind people it's okay to fail. Um, and, and I think, as somebody said, you learn the most from failure. And I believe that looking back now, Absolutely. I think you learn a lot from failure. Absolutely. And so for those of you who are watching this, if you're thinking about becoming an entrepreneur, it's just part of the journey. And like I said, my, my mentor is a guy named Wayne Dyer and Wayne mm -hmm. Dyer said something that just really, when I, when I really got it, it, it shifted my perspective. And he said this. There is no such thing as failure. There's only the non-attainment of a desired result. So if you really stop and think about that, we have a desired result and we don't get it. That means we fail. We just didn't get that result. But what happens is people fail and all of a sudden they make it about themselves that I didn't just fail, I'm a failure. Hmm. And when you incorporate that idea that I'm a failure. Guess what? You will never succeed. Mm -hmm. So understand that failure is simply the non-attainment of a desired result. So what do you do? Create another desired result. What else do you want to do? What else do you want to go <laughs> after, right? So that's how you pick yourself back up, simply shifting your focus. For example, um, and I've mentioned this tons of times on this podcast, and, and Marla, you kind of alluded to it. See, I went through a divorce bankruptcy, foreclosure, depression, homelessness for two years, right? So by society standards, I was a failure, right? No, I didn't get the results that I wanted. So I shifted my mindset, set a new goal and intention. And now I'm doing exactly what I love doing. I've been blissfully married for the past 22 years. My life is absolutely perfect. Now, was it easy? No, <laughs> it was extremely <laughs> difficult. But what I can now see is that all of the challenges, all of the difficulty actually shaped me to be the man that I am today. Mm. If I would have removed any of those experiences, I wouldn't be who I am today. So I actually wrote a book called Adversity is Your Greatest Ally how to use life challenges as stepping stones to live the life of your dreams. And so what I have come to know is that every adversity, every challenge brings us a gift and a lesson if we're mm -hmm. willing to look deeply enough. Yeah. So, and you, bas you basically said that. So yes, you're going to fail, but look at what you learn and ultimately look what you created. Interesting, I was looking in the back I really hit me home. I was watching uh, Yoda on one of the Star Wars, and Luke was, I mean, Luke was all despondent about his failure where I think it was Kylo Ren or something. And he's like, Yoda said, Yeah, he's the greatest teacher. I was like, Hey, Yoda? Really <laughs> know. And it, just, it was years later, and I just remember seeing that and saying, You know, that's, 
it, it, and, and, I, and I, for you, like I said, your journey inspired me just to hear, um, like, you know, getting yourself back up. I remember I was somewhere and I was telling somebody my journey about, you know, failing the, failing the business. And at that time I was three years sober. So she was like, you know, you're, somebody said, you know, don't you feel like, like a loser? You know, you're sober, you business crash. And it was like, oh, I don't feel like a loser. Actually, I feel like I'm a winner. I was able to conquer that demon. I've been sober for four and a half years. I built this business back up. And I was so just as a society view and the real view, it's the only view that matters is your view. And I'm glad you said that. The only view that matters is how you see yourself. Society could, you know, who cares? It's irrelevant. Yeah. Um, and that was, a, I mean, you said that, you mentioned maybe think of that story. Yeah. And again, I'm, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it, it helps out. And there, there, there's so many lessons within the Star, Star Wars. And, and, and the one lesson that I really love was he talked to us about the hero's journey. Mm-hmm. And the hero's journey, if you're not familiar with it, is a 12-stage journey that we all go through in life. But, but the point here is that stuff happens. <laughs> it's not what happens that matters to you. It's what you do with what happens to you that matters. So, and I think black males, to cut right in, sorry to interrupt, it's, it's get rid of this nothing happens to me mentality. Get rid of this that we're invincible mentality. Get rid of this that we are the ultimate. I think the next, the, that brainwashing has gotten to us that we can't fail, that we can't cry, we can't be vulnerable, we don't get hurt. No, we hurt. You know, we cry. <laughs> we Absolutely. And I think listening, we all been there, brother. Yeah. Oh, we all been there. Uh, no, I've seen friends, unfortunately, take their own lives because of the pressures and the stresses of being in that space. And to look back, we're like, why did he call? You know, why didn't he just send a text? You know, we know it's tough. We know it's tight. No society has placed everything on those shoulders. And then taking all your help away. They told you to swim with one arm for your whole life. We get it. Uh, just know that, you know, it's okay. And that's what we, you know, it's okay to fail. In fact, what you're saying is it's going to happen. That's yeah. a hero's journey. You know, you're going to. So that's what, if anybody listens to this, get that out of it. And it's a well, well, well spent time. Absolutely. So I want to talk a little bit about Simply Structure. And now it is my belief, Marley, this is Michael Taylor's belief. There's never been a better time to become an entrepreneur than right now. This, this is my, my belief. First of, all, first of all, what are your thoughts about that comment? I agree 100%. I think this is a golden era. The amount of, the amount of, the biggest, the biggest barrier to entrepreneurship is usually capital. Because you had to buy materials and goods, buy a warehouse, pay rent, pay staff. Those are all not here anymore. You know, you could literally live, run a, run a business from a cell phone. Nobody no, So I think I agree with you. There is now is absolutely the golden age of entrepreneurship. And, and I think it, it behooves, I don't know if we can survive going forward without being in some capacity. I think people are realizing that. You know, you know, you're one layoff, one tech company away from nothing. Where entrepreneur, there is no layoff. Right. And she, told me, she told me when COVID hit, he sat down. He said, "Marley, I looked at him. He said, you 'You gonna see who can hunt, who can't.' Mm. He said, looked right in the eye. You gonna see who can hunt, who can't. So us, this is what we've always done. We've grinded. We know what it's like. So for us, the struggle to be that's our second nature. And the fast forward after the pandemic it really does show. And I think, but to your comment, entrepreneurship now is the golden era. And especially if you're black and brown. LLCs have no race. Yep. Now, so with that being said, let's let's start with the basics, okay? So there's somebody watching this that said, you know, man, I, I'd kind of like to be an entrepreneur, but I really don't. I have this idea, but I don't really know where to start, okay? So let's say that there's a person watching this and maybe they have an idea about starting a company. Where do they start to begin forming their company? I would take. I would say, the most important thing you can do is going to sound very cliche. Get a basic business plan, even if it's five pages, three pages, one page, something to put on paper. Because I think I was either telling you or somebody else. A lot of my clients who are athletes, they'll put me on a phone because they get asked all these deals, and they call me Doctor No. My job is to say no. I say no. And the first question I ask. Do you have a business plan? And nine times of the time, they don't. I go, like, okay, sorry, no, thank you. So I would say, somebody's watching, just Google it. Score has great ones available online. 
Google, go to score.org, click business plan and fill it in. I think it's essential, essential, essential. If you are a listener here, it means you're probably a brown or black male, business plan. That would separate you from 90% of people. And again, it does not have to be a 104 pager with graphs and charts and 10 year sales projections. That's, that's an impediment. That will stop you. Find a 10 pager, put it in, answer some simple questions, but start with a business plan. I think before anything else, well, two things are important. One, a name. You got to have a name or something that you don't mind telling people. And two, business plan. We spend a lot of time with branding for our clients. You got to have a name that comes off easy off your lips. Because it's your baby, your brand. You're going to say it all the time. So have a name. Name and a business plan gets you pretty far. That was start there. Got it. So I got my business plan now. Got a good idea where I'm going. What do I need to file to start my company? What, what do I need to do? Next thing is an EIN, employee identification. Now, I'll give you the free route because this is if you're a business owner with an idea, you're going to try to put as much money in your pocket as possible. So, getting an EIN is a free service. People charge for it. It's not, we're a little different because we use strategic EIN. So, we're doing it as part of a package. But for the most part, one entity, an idea, go to the irs.gov and get an EIN. It is a free service. It is a huge game changer because now you're telling the federal government you're in business. That's step one. Now, it is you have to fill the form out, answer a lot of questions, but it's a free service. Step two is look at your budget and how much budget you have. I tell people, if you really are serious about a business, spend money to get it formed the right way because now you invested and now you're popular. People who tend to let ideas linger they tend not when they spent seven hundred fifty dollars to set the whole thing up. Now it matters, and I tell that that's you know it may be a vacation, it may be a couple of nights out. How serious are you? You know you have to be able to put something. In. So there's a spend. I, I tend to say don't spend if you don't have it. But if you're gonna go out and go party, and this is your number, say no to the party. Start the company. Um, again, there's smaller shops that do it. Simply structure. We kind of we're more of a structuring company. But that's step one and step two uh, is to start the company. You have to have a legal business entity. A big difference is people say, oh, I went to the county. I got a DBA. DBA means nothing. And to put it in perspective, 83% of all small businesses are that route. County DBA file. That's not a legal entity. That doesn't separate any of your assets. It doesn't do anything. It's, it's a red herring, for lack of a better term. And it, it actually exposes you because you think you have a business. You think you're different. No, you're not a separate legal entity. So that's why I don't even get involved that route. That's a big misconception. Immediately, EIN, LLC. Um, that's step one because that allows, especially with Amazon, warehouse, drop shipping. Now your EIN, is you're jumping to the pot of all the businesses. If it's a social, you're a person. EIN, you're a business. They don't know you're one client versus 500. They don't know. EIN, and it's the biggest thing that separates. So those two are name, business plan, EIN, LLC. That's the foundation. So give them a rundown real quickly on why it's so important to form the LLC to separate, because, to separate yeah. you from your business. Because an LLC stands for limited liability company. And it does exactly that. It limits your liability. So people say, oh, nothing happens, no big deal. That's small thinking. That's not thinking why LCs exist. So what I would say, why is it important? Because one, it allows you to now have a legitimate business. A legitimate business means you're a legal business entity. You want to be legitimate versus illegitimate all the time. That's the first thing. And it just gives you, and second thing, it gives you much more credibility. An LLC will tell anybody that's looking at it, at least you're serious. It took some steps. Those are the first two outward facing, legitimacy and seriousness. So you, can't, you can't make those up. Behind the scenes, it allows you to get much, much, much more expenses. People get deductions, businesses get expenses, big difference. Behind the scenes, it allows you to control your assets, control you, protect your wealth. Behind the scenes, it allows you to build in a way that people can't build. Humans are limited, businesses are not. So all of those, are important on a face-to-face level for this one LLC. We're not even getting into the structure that we do. 
talking about just one. And that's what I would say. It's forward-facing, legitimacy. Because say you want to raise capital for family and friends, which a lot of people do. Hey, I'm starting a business. If you say I'm starting a business, I go, ask, yeah, come back in your series. Hey, I got an EIN, have my LLC, have my business plan. I'm going in here. You help me out. Two different responses. Now, a lot of people, I think, in their minds, they think, okay, I want to start a corporation, right? So they think about like an S corp or something like that because the 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 perception might be that a corporation is a better structure. So what's the difference or what's better for a startup person, an LLC or an S corp? That's a great question. <laughs> great question. Um, a corporation is still a corporation. It still follows corporate rules and it has a corporate tax return. Remember, corporations have a corporate tax return. Now, most corporations don't pay it. That's another conversation. So it still has a corporate tax return. So that's very big difference. And a corporation, the reason why people think of it, it's because they see it on TV. The stock exchange, NASDAQ, those are all corps. And I hear that argument, and my mentality is, listen, those corps you see are owned by LLCs. Those, everything you're seeing, LLC is always behind the scenes. No corp is not owned by people. Anymore. LLCs are everywhere. So, to, and I joke, if you want to see where the fish are, go where the whales are hunting. Not 83% of, or 90% of all new businesses formed the LLC. Corps are dead. And they are a dead business. Um, to put it in perspective, the last thing I'll say about it, if S corps were effective, LLCs wouldn't exist. Corps has been around since 1892. LLCs has been around since 1977. Why were they created? It's because they're better in every capacity. There is nothing a corp can do that LLC can't do. If the LLC, guess what? Can get taxed in the corp who wants to. You can file a form, file an election form, treat me as a corp, an S corp. An S corp can't get taxed as LLC. It can't reverse it. So there's really no, ad, no advantage to an S corp. There's none at this point. Um, I would think before single member LLCs were allowed, before online filing, before pass, all that stuff, maybe S Corps had a role, but LLCs have really taken over and owned the category for the last 30 years. Mm. Now, you said something at the conference that really got me thinking. <laughs> and I'm in Texas, mm -hmm. and you said, I will never file in, te in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about why it's important where you might file your LLC. And this is, I apologize, but I'll give a little history lesson on LLC. So if it's a little academic, I apologize, but I think it's important. So LLCs were created by statute for the states. They were really they were created, which is ironic, by a Texas oil company. <laughs> the Texas oil company's team of bankers and accountants created this mythical business structure that gave them all the benefits and none of the benefits. And then this Texas company started shopping around this new concept called LLC to the states. They went to Alaska first. Alaska said no. Then they went to Wyoming and Wyoming said yes. Hence why Wyoming is the first for LLC. The reason why I tell that story is LLCs are state specific. There is no federal oversight. There is no federal LLC. There's no federal LLC law. So each state gets to do what it wants in regards to LLC. Why is that important? Because certain states decide to tax LLC. <laughs> is being one of them. Um, Maryland is another one that will directly, New York City, we will not tax a city resident that don't form in New York. So the states will look at LLCs differently. So that's why we say never in Texas because we don't want any of our clients to have a tax liability where they don't have to. I could form in New Mexico and make, I make a million dollars in Texas, I got to pay Texas a couple hundred dollars. I make a million dollars in New Mexico, I got to pay New Mexico zero dollars. Which is better? I mean, it's just a nature of that's because Texas is saying we're Texas, we do what we want. And every LLC owner who has filed in Texas has got a letter from the controller that says, "Welcome to the controller. We will assess your tax and give you a number." Everybody gets. It. You can look back and say, "Wow, that's right. It did come from a controller, the tax department, not the Secretary of State. The tax department controls this." That's different than most states. You look at New Mexico. No taxes, no franchise tax fee, complete anonymity. So you look at how certain states use laws differently. So that's why, and it's the room 
And I told Seneca, whoever comes out of room will benefit because now they have they know more than you come in. Now, if you're a Texas company, what the big corporations do, they file a plus one. They file the Texas company to be local. They want local presence. They want licenses. They want to be in Texas. And then they file a company right on top of it in New Mexico, in Delaware. And that company actually owns the Texas company. But the Texas company makes no money. It goes flat every year. So guess what happens to its tax liability? It goes away. And now this other company takes all the money in a much more favorable tax jurisdiction. So to put it in perspective, the Houston Texans, the football team in Houston, is really Houston Tex no fo Houston Football Holdings LLC. That's who they really are. <laughs> like so Dallas Cowboys are not Dallas. Their money is parked away. Well, his money receives. So when I tell people you see these names in Texas, they're not there. <laughs> yeah, been there. It's the entrepreneurs, it's the Michael Taylor, it's the Seneca, it's the us who form in Texas, because that's what we are, that's what we think we can do who pays a massive burden. But the oil companies are gone, believe me. They are all headquarters in Antigua or all these other oil jurisdictions because that's where the money really lies. So that's why the states take what they can take, but that's a long explanation and a little, a little academic, but I wanted to get the history because that's, if you leave to say, hey, LC, you know they want by statewide, it works. Then you got my explanation. They can do what they want state by state. That's the whole two lessons about. Gotcha. Now, again, as mentioned, I believe there's never been a better time to be a lot uh, to be alive and to be an entrepreneur. But there's a lot more to it than obviously what we can talk about in the, the hour that we have. So if you're interested in forming an LLC, you need support. You need to have someone that can walk you through it. I got the perfect guy for you right here. So, Marla, I want you to tell people how can they find you if they want to work with you to help them set up their companies. The best thing to do now is one thing, go to Access Grand Conference when we're around because there I go, my cell phone number is easy to get because it's much more personal. Uh, when in these type of settings, go to the website and just book, a, book an appointment. Book 30 minutes. Let me see what's going on. Let my team talk and we'll hear because we may say, great, let's rock and roll. We may say, hey, listen, you're starting out. I tell people we have, we have two favorite clients. Actually, all of our clients are our favorite clients. We love every client. We're very blessed to have them. Each client we generally like a lot. Our when we tell the most is uh, it's an Olympic long jumper that was going to pay our fees. And we said, no, you take your money and go to the Olympic training. Don't spend what we need. And he's building a clothing line for Olympics. And then we have somebody who just got awarded a contract for seven years, $10 billion, turning tires into jet fuel. Okay. Um, and we run the whole game. So book an appointment. Again, we could, generally speaking, handle whatever you're trying to get into. We haven't even discussed international yet. We haven't even discussed trust yet that we formed. We haven't discussed SPVs or real estate vehicles. We haven't discussed how each property should be its own LLC. We can talk for five hours. And then uh, entrepreneur, especially books. Books have IP rights, IP holdings, and all this stuff we can get into, uh, the, the nature. But for this, for this initial podcast, go to the website, simplystructured.com. Each link will book an appointment, the Calendly. A black owned business, by the way. Um, and book up in 30 minutes, we'll find out what we really need. That's the best way. It is the easiest and the best way in the really touch uh, to get a hold of us. And again, because this conversation was really the shadow stereotype that I listen to a lot. And one of my other mentors who helps out a lot is, is Charles Smith, uh, the former basketball player, who I think his legacy will be building a bridge between Africa and the state of basketball. He's doing tireless work over the course of the season. And he needs to be commended, I think, on a global scale for what he's doing for our people, because he really is nonstop. The guy's in Zanzibar, Tanzania, Ghana, are building, connecting businesses, saying that we just got to cross. You want to solve things? Cross the Atlantic. They look like us. They sound like us. They work well like us. And it's funny. I was forming with a Cape Verdean client. It was like, just like me. It's like Cape Verdean in my life. Look just like me. We were laughing about it. So, um, you know, Charles, and the reason I brought him up is, you know, he always says we're all lone wolves. Us lone wolves need to get together. And I think once all of us lone wolves get together, we could form a lone wolf pack, which is unheard of. You know, we all could do things. So that's why I can, anybody who's listening, why this show, I think, is beyond important. Got to share it. I'm so happy to be on here. I'm so happy you mentioned failures, vulnerability, getting those are things that we need to talk about. But it's really an honor 
to be on here. And um, I'm so happy, again, for you and what you're doing. It's, it's such an important topic. I think, and I do think in the now nuclear family, Black men entrepreneur is our new role. And I think because Black women are going to absorb most of the high paying W-2s, your only answer is entrepreneurship. I mean, that's just the nature of it. And it's not a bad answer. And I, and I was talking to my wife about this. I think the ideal scenario is W-2 entrepreneur. Flexibility, stability combined. And I think it's the prime time for Black, because our nature is inventive. Because our nature is risk-taking. Our nature is to go out there on our own. So entrepreneurship for Black men, this is it. This is our time. You could do whatever you want. I, again, for our nuclear family, I don't think a two W2 system is going to work for us. There's not that many spots they're going to give. They're only going to give but so many DEI and DEI, DEI spots. And now you can't have black men and black women competing for the same spot. Women's going to take it. It is what it is. There's two checkboxes, women and the black. We can't do that. You don't get to. So you're going to get passed over it almost every time. Entrepreneurship, that is your answer. Yeah. And that's what I would say. So I do agree with you tenfold over. Anybody listen to this, this is your time. You want to balance it out? You want to make your money? You can make money doing anything. And entrepreneurship is, is really the answer. Yeah. And again, I think the piece that has been missing for us is access to resources. Because um, Anthony Robbins said something I thought was pretty amazing. He says, there's no such thing as lack of resources. There's only a lack of resourcefulness. Mm. So we have to be resourceful. How do we mm-hmm. be resourceful? We have conversations like this. Mm-hmm. We we collaborate with each other. You know, that's 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 the sharing of the resources. Um, and again, another reason I, I put together this show so that how can we as black men come together, connect with other black men who are doing remarkable things, sharing mm-hmm. information, sharing knowledge, sharing wisdom. Now, you you mentioned the word vulnerability, which again I think probably we black men go, what do you mean? But the point here is one of the things that's really missing, and, and my primary focus has been on the changing roles of manhood and masculinity in general. Mm-hmm. And that's primarily what I speak about. And I know that as Black men, we definitely struggle with vulnerability and even mm-hmm. understanding what that means. A lot of us don't have the emotional vocabulary to mm-hmm. really connect and create that nuclear family, those great relationships. But that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> <laughs> So, so right now we're talking about entrepreneurship and building wealth through entrepreneurship and my man, Marley can help. If you're thinking about starting a business, you don't know where to start this brother. I mean, I was just blown away. Just listening to him. I was like, okay, this brother knows LLC. Okay. I learned so, I learned so much in that little short conference. I was like, damn. So I had to come home and rethink my whole business structure. <laughs> oh, that, that's that's so awesome to hear. Now I will yeah. say the website has resources. We're adding white papers. We're adding graphs. Our mentality is secret. This knowledge is not secret. Right. Now this knowledge should be to the masses, and and, and we um we're not we're like you know we're learning. Now I was talking to somebody yesterday on a call, and I said our goal is not for you to keep coming to us year after year after year. Now our goal is for you to learn this so well. You're texting us and you're doing your own. You don't need us anymore. We built you to not. That's why we give the white paper, give the grass. We tell you everything we want to know because our goal is maybe it's bad business. We don't want you to come back two years from now. We want you to know this stuff. We want you to say, I'm, a, I'm good, Jack. We want you to spread other people. We want you to get other people. We, we want, we need the masses to start doing this. So that's why we'll have plenty of information on there, resources. We will not be short on it. And we're, we're so happy and excited and blessed to be on it. Really, yeah. Thank you so very much. And there's a there's going to be a link below the video. So you can click on this link, take you right to his website. Just sign up for the introductory call. Just That's it. 30 minutes. We'll figure yeah, it out. Yeah, sign up for the introductory call. Okay, so as we wind down, Brother Marley, I want you to now share your final words of wisdom with the audience, whatever comes to mind, whatever you feel like putting out there. Put those final thoughts out. Trust the universe. Love is amazing. And LLCs are great. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think if you do that, you'd be a, uh, and, I, and I mean that. I, I, I really can't stress enough. How, and again, it was Chi when I was sitting down and talking about him as a business guy. The reason I tell the story is because I had just got sober. Now I'm telling Chi, like, listen, man. I'm, he's like, he looked at me. He said, hey, you got it. And it was such a monumental moment for me, especially black men. It's all the whole conversation. 
that with that that demon that we battle with that and sobriety and, and how valuable it has been and, and how important it is a lot of us to kick that and he was like hey man you know and and one thing he said you have a gift you, you're gonna get people to the super high when you're finding this and L, he knew llc's was that answer trust the universe love is amazing and llc's are fantastic. there you go all right man so my boy man i tell you i'm just like i said everything happens for a reason i know we have been brought together by divine appointment my man so so we are we are we are now connected right we are now connected so again i'm I'm just honored and, and just glad we are connected and looking forward to further collaborations however that looks so this has been another episode of shadow the stereotypes and i'm serious there's never been a time to be a better time to be an entrepreneur if you want to get started Contact his brother. He'll help you. All right. We'll see you next episode, guys. Take care.